So I'm going to say it is a hot take. It might be a hot take. I don't know. It depends on oh how boy. what our audience thinks. Uh, but, but Stranger Things season four is probably the best season of the franchise. Hello and welcome to the movie podcast spoiler free review of Stranger Things season four, volume one. My name is Daniel and joining alongside me today is Anthony. Hello. Doing, Anthony? Hello, hello, hello. Excited to be there- here. There is no Shabazz on this episode. We did lose him to the Upside Down, so yeah, uh, we don't know there. when he'll be back. Maybe he'll be back at some point. We don't know. We're not going to go rescue him. He's on his no. own. <laughs> We're not going to go rescue him. Uh, like I said, this is our spoiler-free review of Stranger Things 4. Uh, Netflix was so kind to send us the first seven episodes of the show uh, that you'll all be able to check out later this week. Uh, it's crazy to have Stranger Things back in the world. This is a show that we, again... Uh, when I think back to the earlier days of the movie podcast, back in 2019, um, we spoke a lot about season three when that came out. I think our show was only a couple months old at that point. Mm-hmm. But here we are, three years later, finally getting season four. And we'll let you know if it was worth the wait or not. Uh, because as always, you can catch a brand new episode of the movie podcast every single Monday and watch out throughout the week for our review episodes and all the latest movies and series, just like this one. Uh, make sure you follow us at The Movie Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterboxd. And don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Discord, and write into the show at hello at themoviepodcast.ca. Now, you may be wondering, hey, Daniel, you said every single Monday, but there's no episode today. No, this is this is in, um, in service of our, our normal Monday episode. This is our Stranger Things episode today. Uh, we will be going back to our weekly episodes next week and maybe... Maybe Shay will find his way back from the upside down by then. What do you think, Anthony? Hopefully. Hopefully he makes it out, know. you know? We're not counting on it. No. We're not counting on it, though. Uh, how are you doing, though, Anthony? You doing okay? I'm doing well. This is uh, this is one of those shows that it's been a long time coming, and I can't yes. wait to talk about it. It's, it's funny, too, because I think for, for, for all of us on the show, or at least if I speak for myself, and maybe Shay, since he's not here, we were all we all love Stranger Things, but it's also been so long that I've also felt like I'm excited for the season, but I wasn't really like as anticipated or hyped up going into it mm-hmm. because I'm like, okay, it's, I'm, I'm, it's going to be more Stranger Things. But the best part about this is that as soon as I started watching it, my excitement just shot up to eleven. So uh, some quick some quick housekeeping I want to do before we get into our spoiler free review. Uh, I do want to remind you that there are so many episodes of the movie podcast we'd love for you to check out. You could check out our review uh, right now for Top Gun Maverick, our spoiler-free review. We'll also be having a spoiler-filled review later on this week. You could check out our review of Men, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, uh, and listen to all of our interviews that we've had on the movie podcast in May, including director Sam Raimi and Michael Waldron of Doctor Strange, uh, director Akiva Schaefer of Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Uh, you could check out our discussion with the kids in the hall, uh, Dave Foley and Mark McKinney, uh, and Devin Nakoda of Sneaker Ella. So there's been so many interviews. We've been so lucky to have so many special guests on the show. Um, and we just want to keep going. So hopefully June will continue that momentum and we'll have a great time. But today's all about Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 1. Uh, so Netflix is breaking up the seasons a little bit. Uh, I, I'll be honest for the longest time. I thought that the season was going to be broken out into like six episodes and six episodes, but it's actually seven episodes for volume one. And then on July 1st, we're getting two more episodes, but those episodes are like an hour and a half and then two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And the running theme with all of the episodes this year is that they are all over an hour long with episode seven being close to two hours. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot more stranger things and we're definitely going to talk about it. Uh, You don't need a synopsis for this show. You already know why you're here. So let's just dive right into it. Anthony, I'm going to get you to start us off with your spoiler free thoughts and first reactions going into stranger things season four. So I'm going to say it is a hot take. It might be a hot take. I don't know. It depends on how, what our audience thinks. Uh, But the stranger things season four is probably the best season of the franchise. Wow. Okay. That is yeah. definitely a hot take for it sure. Is, it is a lot better than all the other seasons. You know, like yes. in terms of it. in terms of grandness and storytelling and character development, production wise, everything is better. And it really shows in this season. Um, the runtime for each episode, like you said, Daniel, is about an hour and a half. And 
I love how invested the Duffer brothers are utilizing that hour period or that hour and a half period to tell or to answer a lot of those questions that we have and to right. bring in more questions because yeah. there's a lot of questions that will come out of this season. and A lot of questions. A lot of questions. We don't know. We, we only watched the first seven episodes, so we don't know how the season ends yet. But what we got is just an elevation to the Stranger Things franchise. I think the right. characters that were introduced are fantastic. They all have their own... The pacing of each character is perfect. Like they, every, you, you learn about them really quickly and you understand where they're going and right. what they bring to the table for this season. Yeah. Um, and even like just each character, because it's such a big story now and it takes place in two different locations, each character or characters, if they're in a group, um, they all have like their own little story that's revolving around this big story. So even though some stories might seem uh, slower and then you'll get into another story that's very fast paced. So they all complement each other, which is fantastic. Right. But I think for me, it's just how grand this show is now becoming in terms of its own identity. I feel like a lot of the, the, the situations they're getting into now and the stories that are being told are going to have graver consequences because it's it's much bigger than than where they were in the past three years, right? You know, and I, and it really shows in this sense. Like we're in California, and there's a lot of stuff happening in the desert, and there's there's still stuff happening back home. But now you're going to another country. It's there's a lot of things happening, which it just makes this so much grander, so much better. Right. Um, and probably the most frightening season ever, I would say. Like this is probably the scariest Stranger Things that we will we've had in the past four seasons. Uh, yeah, there's this, this season leans deep into horror elements. It leans deep into just really dark imagery that mm -hmm. I don't think we. Yeah, like the Demi Gorgons and other creatures have looked scary and stuff like that. But I think this season more than ever, like you said, Anthony, this is the darkest and stranger. Uh, sorry, the darkest and scariest season yet in the show. A hundred percent. Like, I don't know if it's because it's taking place in 1986 and this might be the time when horror films have become um, more popular during that time period. Yeah, sure. But there's a lot of like Freddy Krueger, a lot of dream sequences. Yeah. Where, a lot of it's. Pennywise. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of like of that around. Um, even the guy who played Freddy Krueger, uh, what's his name? Robert, Robert Eglin. Eglin. He's in the, the one of the episodes. So it's it's playing to that as well like they want this to be a scarier season compared to the others but right. overall fantastic i think for me i said it in my tweet millie millie bobby brown is probably the best that we've seen her like there's there's sequences where we we are brought into her world and trying to live in this world that she doesn't she's new to so like the normal right. life but like just dealing with high school and bullies and stuff like that and also losing her powers you really shows she really shows like the emotion that she's going through these different roller coasters right. of emotion and dealing with all these things that are happening to her so i think yeah. millie bobby really stole the show for me but even a lot of the new characters have as well uh, and david harbour and and um with renona rider renona rider just fantastic everyone's fantastic in the show and this is probably like I said, the best season. I don't know if everyone... <laughs> I don't know if if you agree, but that that's what I think. Listen, I think the first season of Stranger Things really is lightning in a bottle. I think that was such a perfect story to tell, but this is all of that elevated, cranked up to eleven, pun intended. Mm -hmm. Like this is everything you love about Stranger Things, but better. The visuals are better. The scope is larger. The story we're telling is deeper and scarier. And what I love so much is that this show feels like it's maturing with its audience, where the first season feels very much like an Amblin, you know, like mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg, like cr lost creature in the forest and teaming up with the kids. Like you said, now it's getting more mature. Now it's getting scarier. So it's taking more inspirations from what was popular in the 80s. So you're seeing a lot more horror elements you're seeing the freddy krueger nods you're seeing the jason you're seeing the pennywise nods of what of, of the stephen king really like kind of really embracing that stephen king um vibe that the show has done for so long you know it's a small town hawkins blah 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 but what i love so much about the show is that i love that the longer episodes 
you're getting a lot more done in them. It doesn't feel like there, there's no really natural ending points where you would see like, okay, like this is where it's going to end. And then it keeps going. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like that. I like that. It's not just like ending on a tease and then picking up moments afterwards in the next episode. It's like each episode feels complete in a way. And yeah, there's cliffhanger endings, but it's not as big of a cliffhanger endings as we, you know, I think that we're now used to seeing with like the Marvel TV shows or whatever TV shows right. that we're getting week to week. I will say though, be- with the longer episode long the uh, uh, run times, I wish the show was weekly. I'm sorry, that may be an unpopular opinion, but you could have avoided this whole volume one, volume two weirdness if you just dropped each episode of the show weekly. This is a long ass show in the terms of each episode. This is over an hour every single week. It would have been you would have owned the conversation, and I think Netflix would have loved some positive. Uh, news every single week because they've had a really rough 2022 you would have had amazing coverage every single week and uh, speculation every single week if you were able to release one episode a week leading up to the final two episodes in july because it's so weird to call this volume one and then volume two is only two episodes regardless of their length right it's only two episodes so it's a little strange um I did want to talk about the new characters because there's a lot of great ones, but the one specifically that I think is nailing it and I think just fits so great in this world is Joseph Quinn as Eddie Munson. Mm -hmm. I think he's just such a likable character. He kind of reminds me, we were talking, Anthony, like he has a wrong, a young Robert Downey Jr. vibe to him. Yeah. You know, but he's just such a great character and I'm so excited for everyone to see him within these seven episodes, of course, not spoiling where anything goes, but he is so damn good in it. Um, and then you also have other characters who are popping up and it's it's funny seeing like the new characters interacting with the old characters because everyone feels like they fit. Everyone feels like they're just kind of playing the role and, you know, playing like these archetypes that you would see in like 80s movies and things like that. But everyone fits. Um, and like to your saying, like you said, Anthony, with the length, we are so spread out now that it, it reminds me a lot of the Lord of the Rings where you have like these different factions of characters where you're like, OK, this is what Frodo and Sam are doing. Okay, now this is what Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas are doing. And then here's right. what Gandalf is doing. So everyone's kind of spread out. And right when you're thinking, hey, what's what's Eleven up to? Or what's, you know, what's Winona Ryder and uh, I'm, I'm saying her, I'm saying her actress name instead of um Oh Joyce. Uh, like Joyce. Joyce. Yeah. What's yeah. like what's Joyce up to? Or what what are these characters up to? Like it will kind of cut to them and you'll be like, oh the show kind of knew that we've been away from them for a while and let's go back. So I I say that as a compliment, right there. That's a really good to be like in the same thing as the Lord of the Rings. That's, that's really good. Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, but um, there's just so many characters and it's a testament to how good the show is that each faction of characters, you may have your favorite character still, but no matter which group of characters you're with, you're going to be enjoying it and having a good time. So that's, that's a great, uh, that's a great sign. But yeah, man, if they release these weekly, it would have been, the internet would have been owned by Stranger Things for the next like nine weeks. Yeah, I think it's a, a shot in their foot, right? We, they they created this trend, and I think it might not be the best for this series right now, and for even for right. Netflix to own the conversation, the internet conversation, in regards to their show and just being, you know, popular again because Netflix, yeah, is right now in like, tough waters. Deep, but it's been three doo-doo. years since we've had this show. I know, and it's been three years. Yeah. It's been a really long time. It, it, the funny thing is, the show picks up right off, right up, right after. Sorry, the the third one ends, so you see them in such an older state yeah. than compared to what they were previously. It's so shocking to see how these yeah. these kids have grown think, up so fast. Yeah, I think they said. I think once the show actually kind of begins, so it's six months later. Yeah. But, well, yes, but yes, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you definitely see like things from right at the ending, and then. Uh, Netflix did release the first eight minutes of uh, the show online now. So this isn't a spoiler, uh, but you do see like a younger 11. So there are flashbacks in this as well, too. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a lot in the show. And you could tell that the budget has gone up, obviously, because what is it like $30 million per episode? Yeah, it's crazy. I would say the CG is a lot better, especially when you see uh, the monsters or the upside down world. It just looks better compared to right. season one two i think season three did a really good job with their giant upside down monster right. um but I th- this season does a really good job and getting back going back to the story i think s- episode seven really summarizes everyone's story and how connected they are 
And right. they, they really did a good job because you're, you're, you're watching this series and you're thinking, well, how is this going to connect to this and this and this and this? Because every there's, there's so many characters and they all have their own path. Right. But episode seven really ties it with a nice bow tie and delivers yeah. it. And we, we, we watched it together and we were like, you know what? That's, that's actually a really good ending to volume one. Like I'm, I'm is, super yeah. interested to see where it goes from there. Yeah. And I, and I was just like, damn it, Netflix, let us watch it all. Like, give, yeah. like, like, let us, I wish it all was coming out again. I get why, like there's probably smarter people running the show than we are then. But I think in a sh- with a show like this, you have, you you're sitting on a gold mine, man, just drip feed that every single week. You're going to have, yeah. you're going to have good reactions and excitement every single week because every episode of the show is a banger. Like every episode, I'm like, this is great. This is a lot more character focused. This is a lot more um, story driven. Like you, you feel the urgency more. Yeah. And I think every character feels like they fit and you're seeing the character pairings too, which is great, which reminds me a little bit too of like, obviously I was talking about Lord of the Rings, but when you look at infinity war, you're getting character pairings now and people kind of pairing off and doing their own stories. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to find a way to tie it all together. So the Duffer brothers are great that they could balance a really big cast. And obviously there's other people, Sean Levy um, and uh, the other director this season. Um, blah, 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 blah. I think it's like Nim, uh, Nimrod something. I'm going to get the name of it. I'm going to get the name of, uh, of their name, but uh, yeah. Uh, Nimrod uh, Antal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's like you have so many different people balancing these giant casts and they find a way to make it work, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Who's your, who's your favorite new character? If you don't, Oh, oh. sorry. We, we talked about yeah. um, Eddie uh, Munson, for sure. Eddie Munson, but yeah. for me, I think Argyle is pretty, pretty funny. Argyle he's, is great. Too. He's a comic relief to, to yeah. the, to the, group as as well as i would say um what's her name uh robin robin oh she's she's more of a character a comic relief as well but argyle is pretty funny too there's great characters and they all fit you know like you're going to the fourth season of the show you're gonna you're really starting to wonder okay who's like if you bring in a lot of new cast is this gonna really jive with everyone but everyone jives really well it's a really like watching it i'm like shit like this is why i love stranger things this is why I fell in love with the show. And I think even though the first season, I still think is a, per- a perfect introduction. Yeah. This is the, this elevates everything. And it's, it just makes it even better. Like we're, we're on a great path to show. And it's crazy to think now, like, Oh, we are, we only have one season left with these characters. But who knows? Like there, I'm pretty sure we're going to get spinoffs. I'm pretty sure we're going to get other stories. Most likely. Yeah. I, I would love to see um, a Dustin spinoff because i think he steals he and 11 i didn't really mention um he and bob millie bobby um i think they did a fantastic job like dustin really showcases his his like character his acting chops come out in this one and i think 100 he he does a fantastic job just driving the group to getting to where they have to get to and and you know going on that adventure I think he does a fantastic job. I would love to see him in his own series one day. I know he's part of the original cast, but yeah. you never know. Uh, Joe Keery as Steve is also fantastic. He's always great. Yeah, Joe Keery. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a diehard moment with with him. Yeah, gives me diehard <laughs> um, with a vengeance type of feel, but even just regular diehard. But yeah. there's a lot and of you like, couldn't tell. Yeah, the show's great. It's the really good. Great. Really, really yeah. good. Um, do we do our our review should we get to the, our review? our final recommendation final recommendation yeah i mean like listen if you're watching stranger things up to this point and you're not invested then maybe the show's not for you but the show's awesome the show is like anthony said i think the show's never been better this is um we're in such a great spot with these characters and i cannot wait to see where things go i am back on the stranger things train full force phenomenal watch the series you're probably gonna binge it right away this week when, yeah. it, when it drops on the 27th so yeah it's phenomenal anthony best season i would say it's the best season since season one and i think a lot of the fans will love it and the story is fantastic it just builds on these characters that you love so much and you just want to watch them over and over again sometimes i wish there was yeah. like can you give me two more hours three more hours yeah. four five yeah um but Man, it's just it's nice to see him on screen again. It's nice to dive into this world again and to really enjoy the Stranger Things um, environment. But yeah, fantastic. 
I would again. I think my only criticism is I. I it's not even a criticism of the show. It's I just a release strategy. You know, we have so many shows coming out. June is going to be packed. We have Obi Wan Kenobi. We have Miss Marvel. Yeah. And I don't want Stranger Things to be lost in that conversation now because it's coming out before all of that. So yeah. Or at least it's coming out the same day as Stranger Things, Obi Wan Kenobi. So it's going to be really interesting to see. I mean, the nerd. We all win. The nerds win. We're winning yeah. because we're getting all this stuff. But. There's so many different shows and movies now overlapping that I don't want this to get lost in the conversation because it's so... And there is a good chance it will because I think Netflix marketing really doesn't showcase that Stranger Things is coming out this week. That it's... Right. I see Obi-Wan more often than... And then I even see a glimpse of Stranger Things. Obi-Wan has commercials with car companies, Volkswagen, and and, and just the, the Twitter promotes and Instagram and YouTube and... Disney Plus, they just really marketed these shows. Well, Netflix, I don't even, I don't see them talking about it. This is your flagship yeah. show. This so is your flagship show. You're yeah. spending so much money, and I don't see you talking about your prize possession, and it sucks. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Obviously, yeah. we're going to be doing a spoiler-filled discussion once uh, Shay has found his way out of the Upside Down, and once everyone has had a chance to watch this. Uh, maybe we'll even do it closer to the release of Volume Two. We'll see. We'll 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 find out what works yeah. best. And of course, if you want to see when we're going to drop that, make sure you're following us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterbox on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterbox. Yeah, is that all of them? Yeah. Make sure you yep. follow us on uh, Discord as well too. And if you want to write into the show, you can at hello at the weepodcast.ca. I want to say thank you again to our friends at Netflix Canada for sending us and trusting us with these episodes. Um, it's always interesting with shows that we get early that, you know, we, we always want to protect people's experiences. So if you've listened this long, obviously we, we, we spoke very lightly on story details because yeah. we want everyone to enjoy this the way that we got to enjoy this. So hopefully no monopoly game or no one online spoils it for you. Go and enjoy the show the best you can. And uh, that's always what's tricky when you get all of the season at once, or at least the first volume is that now it's like a bit of a minefield on the internet of spoilers. So we hopefully, uh, we hope that you get to experience it like the same way we did with no other spoilers out there. So please enjoy uh, stranger things. Season four, volume one premieres on Netflix this Friday, May 27th uh, with volume one. And then volume two will be out on July 1st with the final two episodes. Uh, thank you so much again for listening to this episode of the movie podcast. We have lots more reviews coming this week. So you want to make sure you're staying tuned uh, on everything that we're doing on socials. Uh, that was this time with the movie podcast and we'll see you next. We'll